May I at this juncture plead with us to stand and with a clapping ovation make welcome to this platform this distinguished prelate and erudite scholar Professor Dapo Asaju. <laughs> For the protocols, I have composed this collect in memory of Samuel Lajai Crowder. Bow your heads and let us pray. O thou omniscient and omnipotent God, creator of all men and things and the determiner of all human destinies, who in thine for knowledge, turned a slave boy, Samuel Ajayi Crowder, into the champion of bringing the gospel to the vast areas of Nigeria and beyond, becoming the first African bishop in the world, who by his vision, mission, and candor, labored hard to proclaim the gospel, bring education, vocational skills, commerce, agriculture, and Christian civilization to peoples of diverse languages and geographies, Vouchsafe, O Lord, that we, the present servants of thine, in the Anglican and other folds of Christianity, will manifest the same grace, calling, passion, skill, and impact, so that emulating this great but misunderstood hero, Samuel, we may likewise commit ourselves to serving thee and transforming our societies into godly and skillful people who will indeed become light to the darkness of this world, and that through us the knowledge of God will be preserved, enlarged, and at the end of our lives, we all with Samuel Ajay Crowder would find a warm welcome and well done in your heavenly habitation. We pray this through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please be seated. His Excellency, the Governor of Anambra State in Abstentia. His Grace, the Prime Minister of All Nigeria, Most Reverend Dr. Henry Chukudum Ndukuba, Doctor of Divinity in Abstentia, but ably represented by His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Ibunu Amama, himself, very reputable holder of a doctorate degree in church history and an author on Crowder and Christianity in the North. His Grace, the Archbishop of the province of the Niger, Most Reverend Dr. Alexander Ibrahim, other Archbishops here present, our host, our visional, our theologian, and the Prince of the Church, the Lord Bishop of the Diocese of the Niger, Right Reverend Dr. Owens Wokolo. My Lord, God is proud of you. Other bishops who are here present, His Royal Majesty, Igwe, Alfred Achebe, the Obi of Onisha. I was that lecturer at the Chief of Bafemi Awulowo Foundation Lecture, which had your Royal Majesty, the Sultan of Sokoto, other royal fathers, three heads of state, and so many governors in attendance. We still remember your words of wisdom, our dear father. God is also proud of you, sir. Long may you reign. The General Secretary of the Church of Nigeria, the Venerable. Dr. Paul Dajo, our professors of theology and church history here present, especially Professor Ruth Imamoto of the University of Illinois fame, and the professor of the church, specially appointed. 
all the clergy, clergy wives, knights of St. Christopher who are here, and your ladies or dames, all the diocesan officials from the chancellor down of this great diocese, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. The title of my lecture as apportioned is Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder, the forgotten hero, the missing hero, to celebrate one sixtieth year of the consecration anniversary of this great man. I must revert to give special honor to the former bishop of this diocese, and my father and my mother. Right Reverend and Nebioma, Mama Kenneth and Ngozi Okeke. Thank you for your work with the CMS. And thank you so much for giving back to so many of us. I will make a few preliminary remarks before I go into the lecture. I am proud of you Igbo people. Even though Ajay Krada was not an Igbo, you have celebrated him more than any tribe in Nigeria. When we celebrated so many years of the history of Christ, Church Cathedral, Marina, I was the guest speaker. And I asked them, all of you gathered here in this cathedral, how many are aware that Bishop Samuel Lajal Krada is buried in your premises, next to the chancel of the cathedral? Only 10% were aware. They didn't even know he was buried there. Such a great man. His place of burial ought to have been the place of pilgrimage. When the primate came to Lagos, primate went straight to the grave of Samuel Ajayi Crowder. It was Yoruba. This same event ought to be happening in Yoruba land at this time. But we thank God that you have taken the bull by the horn and God will reward you for it in Jesus' name. I have come on a practical note with some personal properties of Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder. No worry. Thank you, sir. When I was the Vice Chancellor of Ajay Crowder University, the Church of England said the personal properties of Crowder cannot be in England. So they look for an institution that can take custody of them for a museum. When Ajay Crowder was consecrated bishop on 29th of June, 1864 present at the service was the captain of the ship that rescued him as a boy and took him to Freetown that captain, Captain Leek said, the boy I rescued as a slave has now risen to become a bishop archbishop of Canterbury I must buy his consecration bible, he bought the bible he signed it Captain Lake bought the consecration Bible given to Ajay Crowder. This is the Bible of Samuel Ajay Crowder. <laughs> Personally signed by the man who rescued him as a boy slave. This is awaiting to be put in a museum. Ajay Crowder University went all over Nigeria and beyond using a clock and a compass to navigate the whole of Nigeria. This is the clock and the compass of Samuel Ajayi Crowder. I was a visiting professor to University of Birmingham in 2003. That must be 21 years ago. I went to the Birmingham Library and I had opportunity to read all the letters of the missionaries, including that of Ajayi Crowder in their original handwriting. This was the pen Samuel Ajay Krada used to write all his letters in his lifetime. <laughs> the 
there is a need for a crowded museum. When you get to Boni, you will still find the throne standing there. You will find the boat that he rode upon preserved. These items are also celebrating their birthday today, one sister's birthday. Wish them happy birthday, every one of you. <laughs> I was present at the Canterbury Cathedral 10 years ago with your bishop to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the consecration of Samuel Ajay Crowder. Your bishop represented all Igbo people and the ministry of Crowder. Professor Wellington Wotogbe Weneka of blessed memory represented the ministry of Crowder at the Niger Delta. Bishop Duke Akami Soko was selected and he represented the Ministry of Crowder in northern part of Nigeria. I was selected not to represent the West because I am from the North, technically speaking, being from Kogi State, but to represent Crowder institutions. God has made me lucky to encounter Crowder many ways. I was rector of Crowder Graduate Seminary, Abel Kota, later VC of Ajay Crowder University, both named after him. In that capacity, I had to be there. It was very interesting that we were robed as bishops, African bishops, seated next to the Archbishop of Canterbury when the service took place and he tendered that apology. We received the apology on behalf of Crowder. And something very interesting during the service was not just the apology, not just that Crowder that they so much despised now had three bishops fully robed at the Canterbury Cathedral. To represent the ministry of this man that Africa has come indeed of age. But during that service, the order of service, the hymns, and the Bible readings were exactly the program that was, that was used to consecrate Ajay Krada. We reproduced and replayed the same service that was used to consecrate him. I respect the white men. They are people of record. They brought out the other program of now 160 years and they still have it. I ask us in the Anglican church, how much of records do we keep? We must thank all those who have named one thing or the other after Crowder. Namely, Crowder Street in Abuja, Crowder Street in Lagos, Crowder Radio in Abuja, Ajay Crowder University at Oyo, Crowder Graduate Theological Seminary at Belkuta, Bishop Crowder Schools in the Diocese of the Niger, Bishop Crowder Schools in the Diocese of Oka, and several other dioceses east of the Niger. We also thank God for the establishment of the School of Missions at Oshogun. As VC of Ajay Krada University, I established three new campuses. I met one. One of them was at Oshogun. And during that period, I took custody of the territory where Ajay Krada was born. I did a mini fencing around that area. I tried, I will still have there the remains of the house where he was captured as a slave when the parents lived. And the tree to which it was tied in 1821, that tree, before it was sold off, that tree is still standing, is still bearing fruit today, more than 200 years. It was my intention during my tenure to create another resting place for Ajay Crowder, where I felt that a museum would be, all these artifacts would be at the museum, and then you can go there as if you are going to Jerusalem, as if you are going on pilgrimage, you will see where his parents lived, you will see where he was tied, you will see his upbringing, and then you can now look at everything about Crowder there. I had earmarked the place for him to be reburied. So that we'll take him away from Lagos, take him to the hometown. Interestingly, this man was so consumed by mission. Even though he was captured as a slave at the age of 12, he went all over the world and he came to Abel Kuta. He lived in Abel Kuta, reunited with his mother. He united, rebaptized his mother close to Oshogun. Ajayi Crowder never visited Oshogun in his lifetime until he died. 
he was consumed by the passion to serve his master. What a unique man. Bishop Samuel Ajakrada was awarded the honorary doctorate degree of Oxford University. Clap for him. That doesn't come cheap. If Oxford University we award an honorary doctor of divinity degree to somebody who was their former student, he studied at Oxford University. <laughs> We're talking about a very great man. Of course, he died on the 31st of December 1891, buried the next day at Ajele Cemetery in Lagos. But for some strange reasons, the military government of Mobalaji Johnson decided that they had no other place to build structures. They asked those who, who buried the dead at Ajele Cemetery to come and remove the remains of their dead ones because they wanted to put a building there for the secretariat. Can you imagine how we think? You go to Canterbury today, you still see the relics of those who had passed. You go to William Shakespeare's hometown, you still see them preserving things. The fact that Ajay Krada was buried there, they said, remove your dead. So Bishop said, Kale had to delay them. Said, the man here, whose bone you want to remove, is not an ordinary man. It's not a man, it's not a normal man. It's just, it's an extraordinary man. Give us more time. And then in 1976, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Most Reverend Donald Cogan, had to come down from England to rebury Ajay Crowder. Archbishop of Canterbury had to come to properly rebury him at the present site of the Cathedral Church of Christ in Lagos. That's remarkable. The meaning of that is that he was not just a Nigerian Anglican citizen, he had become a global Anglican citizen. And the head of the communion at that time had to come to perform a barrier that magnifies the status of the man we are celebrating today. The sphere of service of a giant crowder is incomparable. The many parts of northern Nigeria many parts of western nigeria he laid the foundation for the entire christianization of eastern nigeria he moved and had his throne in niger delta at boni with due respect to all of you whoever you are wherever you came from whether you're anglican you are roman catholic or you are pentecostal ajay krada is the mother of christianity in the whole of eastern nigeria the whole of niger the, the whole of niger delta the larger part of uh, western nigeria and the substantial part of northern nigeria if i am to quantify the number of dioceses he presided over i can tell you it cannot be less than 80 dioceses combined yet he had no vehicle no car no airplane no helicopter trekking bicycle and by boat and by ship he was indeed a remarkable man whose achievements has not been surpassed. We celebrate him and the high points of the places where he domiciled and labored included Lokoja, included Badagre, Abel Kota, Onesha, Boni, and several other areas. Another remark is he was not just an Anglican clergyman, he was a highly spiritual man. And that is the message we tell to many of our churches today. Please be proud to be an Anglican. The Anglican church contains solid spirituality sufficient for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We do not have to compromise with our Pentecostal and charismatic excesses for us to be relevant today. This man was not just an old clergyman. He was highly spiritual. I will tell you three short stories that can underscore that. One... Ajay Crowder often went to pagan shrines to bring out their gods and their idols and destroy them. He came to communities that worshipped animals where they said anybody who tampered with the animals would die because that was their god. Ajay Crowder tampered with many gods of native land and he survived. All those who rose against him were destroyed. That was the man. Touch not my anointed and do. 
Another story. I was a guest preacher at a synod of Ureli one day. And they told me the story that happened in one community. A giant crowd that was coming all the way from Lokoja had to pass through that area. And then he said, how can I pass through this village and then I will not, they have not had the gospel. No, 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 no. Let me wait for a while, spend a week here and preach Christianity to them also. So he came down and he called the people together and he started preaching to them. They rose against him, ganged up against him, and they humiliated him, drove him away. We don't want to hear. He said, I've come to give you light. I've come to give you salvation. I've taken you to many parts, and Jesus has sent me here. They said, no way. Our God is the only one we are going to worship. If we don't live here, we are going to kill you. And so they harassed him, and as he was entering back into his boat, he removed his shoes and shook the dust against them. He said, you have rejected Christianity. I shake the dust against you. And then the Archbishop of Bende told me, all the communities in the whole of that Niger Delta area, they had developed, that village had never developed. All the other communities produce very important songs who have become somebody, that community never produced anybody in life that was so significant. So a man stood up in the Pentecostal realm. He said, this community is suffering because of the pronouncement of Krada because he was rejected. And the man said, no, we have to break this cause. We have to break this cause. And the man declared fasting and prayer. In the course of the fasting and prayer, the man died. They said, now you have to go back to the Anglican church. Where the tradition of the man who put that pronouncement came from. Until they brought in the Anglican authorities and they nullified that particular cause, the action of this man still had consequences for years. That was the man. Another story. We once had a primate who was very, very remarkable and charismatic, Joseph Abiodun Adetiloye. Each time Adetiloye had physical infirmity, he had some problems because he overused himself. You know how dynamic Adetiloye is in the generation of our fathers who are the bishops? Each time Adetiloye had a problem and the doctors could not handle it, he went to the cathedral and said, give me the clothes Ajayi Krada used to wear during the Lenten season. During the service of culmination, he used to put on a dress. When he would be preaching to people, repent, otherwise judgment will come. And they kept it in the cathedral. Each time Adetiloye had physical challenges, he wore it overnight. Wore the clothes of Ajay Krada overnight. By the next morning, each time he did that, sicknesses left and the man was held. These are stories you will not know. Who was this man? The documentary has told us part of it. Some say born in 1807, majority say born in 1809. At Oshogun, in your state, the relics of his family compound are still there. He descended from the royal family of Allah Fion for your Abiodun. The mother came from the royal lineage. So this man had a princely blood in his body. During the Owu Wars, raiding of communities was very common. And so Fulani raiders attacked his community which was large and fenced at that time and they captured most of the men including his father including his mother and his sisters he captured Ajay Krada too he never saw his father again after that capture but the question that arises is this we are talking about an event that happened over 200 years ago 1821 Fulani people captured Ajay Krada and sold him the same Fulani people are the ones who are still disturbing communities all over Nigeria today. This problem is not new. Very interesting. The same people. What has the Fulani got to do with Oshogun? Where would they come to capture people there? So we need to investigate properly to solve the Fulani problem. And how to contain them. 
was sold into slavery six times eventually bought by the Portuguese put on the ship and by 1807 through the ministry of William Wilberforce God bless his soul it's not like our own politicians and parliamentarians many of them have nothing to offer they are just taking money and stealing money in the midst of our poverty and suffering this man William Wilberforce was one of the active members of the Clapham sect those that came to evangelize us in Africa it was not the church of England the established church was not the one that sent out missionaries young boys from Cambridge University, Oxford University gathered themselves together and said we are going to change the world they formed themselves in their 20s in their 30s and they said we are forming the London Missionary Society which became the Church Missionary Society CMS and began to hire clergymen including Charles uh, Goldman a German who was working for them he went to Badagri in 1845 it was a private initiative Church of England only joined them later this man was one of them two of their resolutions were that one or one that they are going to bring Christianity to the dark continent of Africa through the missionary society and two they were going to stop slave trade they were the ones that spearheaded the labor of William Wilberforce and by 1807 the act was passed by the British parliament abolishing slavery and slave trade so since they passed the bill it became the responsibility of government to rescue those people who are intercepted on the high seas captured as slaves and to free them and they also took a decision passed by the parliament to establish Freetown in Syria alone as a place of heaven to resettle all slaves captured on the high seas by the intervention of the British Royal Navy and so this boy was captured and this boy was taken to Syria alone and like other slaves who were freed they settled there got some education got baptized and then they continued their Christian life and so he lived in Freetown, Syria alone and the Freetown, Syria Alonian people, especially the Creoles, they still celebrate Samuel Ajay Crowder. He was a student among them, he was a teacher at Furabe College. He was the first student to be enrolled into Furabe College. First student, number 001 student of Furabe College. Pioneer. He was so outstanding that he became a teacher at Furabe College. He man had a first class brain. After that, he went to St. Mary's Church, Islington in London, where he attended their school, also worshipped there. Eventually, he got to Oxford University. And these people understood the implications of mission. Mission is not about noise. Mission is not about methodology. Mission is taking the gospel to people that are unreached. Doing those things that will last. So he applied himself not just to theology. He also applied himself to the study of languages. Of course he was baptized on the 11th of December 1825. By Reverend John Raban. He studied languages at Furabe College in Syria Law. He also studied languages at Fu at uh, the University of Oxford. Hmm. At his baptism. He decided to take on a Christian name. Who did he name himself after? One of the pioneers of the CMS mission. Reverend Samuel Crowder. Who was the vicar of the Christ Church Newgate in London. That was the hero. So he named himself after that particular man. One of those who founded the CMS. Which also rescued him and they brought him up in free town that is Ajayi Crowder now when he studied and he received Christian instruction there was a need to have an exploration into the Niger area and here the church historians also have to be very careful about their dating there was an expedition sent along the Niger in 1841 it was led by Reverend J.F. Scone. Samuel Ajay Crowder was on that expedition. He was given four responsibilities to be on that expedition. One, imagine, to learn the Hausa language. 
sent from London to go because they had a vision to evangelize the north. We couldn't do that successfully too much simply because of Islamization. In fact, the story of Christianity in the north is another ball game entirely. Bishop Habat Togwell left here, proceeded to the north. That Oyibo man, he got close to Zaria, the Emir threw him out. They moved to another part of the north, they said, no way. Why? Because out of British diplomacy, these British people, their interest was not Christianity, their interest was colonization. They passed a bill and an act forbidding the evangelization of Mohammedan people. And that is what we are still suffering with from today. Lord Lugard entered into a covenant with the Emirates in the north that the north would not be opened up to Christian evangelization because they couldn't allow them to enter Zaria and Kano. They had to settle at Usasa, which was distant a bit from Zaria at that time, where they did their ministry. It became an offense to evangelize anybody in the north. Lord Lugard signed a covenant with the modern Emirates that Islam will not be tampered with, the Muslim territory will not be tampered with. So when the North is reacting today, they are still playing out the so-called covenant which the North had with the colonial masters. They are the origin of our problems. Origin of our problems. They were the ones that married us together. A marriage of incompatibles. And when they were marrying us together, they said, we are going to marry the rich South to the poor husband. The South, Igbo land, Yoruba land, Niger Delta, we are the one Lugard is describing was describing as a rich wife, oh, but married to the poor husband. If a rich wife marries a poor husband, who is the head of the home? So the duty of Krada was to lend Hausa, stimulate commerce, that is economic assignment, teach agricultural techniques, and encourage Christianity. He was later recalled to England, trained, and eventually he was ordained. But the point I want to make is there, is this. In 1841, that mission couldn't succeed very well because of mosquito, which was biting the whites and they were dying. They couldn't resist it. And as a result of that, they had to terminate that particular mission. But before they did terminate it, Ajay Krada already had ministered at Lokoja and presented an Arabic Bible to the Atar. So if evangelization had taken place by this man, in 1841 it is not true that the first contact of the missionaries with us here was in 1842 at Badagre. there was a contact during the 1841 mission and Krada was also involved and later on when they came to Badagri he came also with Harry Townsend he was also able to make great impact you still have a building in Badagri or at Badagri, where, which is called the first story building in Nigeria, built by the missionaries. Of course, Crowder was an author. He published several books and several writings. And we have to give that to him. He was a great intellectual. He published the Yoruba Book of Common Prayer in 1843. That's the reason why all those who pray in the Anglican tradition of the Book of Common Prayer in Yoruba, all those who read the Yoruba Bible all over the world today, they must thank the man who translated the Bible and the Book of Common Prayer into Yoruba language. He is still the guide, literally, of the spirituality and the worship of millions of people today. Number two, he translated the Yoruba Bible apart from the Book of Common Prayer. Number three, he translated the vocabulary of the Yoruba Bible in 1852. He collected the number of local proverbs and published them in 1852. He was the one who originated the ego primer, A, B, C of ego language. Because of his knowledge of languages and orthography, he was the one that developed the A, B, C of ego language. He did that with the support of Simon Jonas. This man worked with an ego man who was you know, assisting him at that time as a lay minister and he was able to listen to him at Abo and guided him. So if you can speak English today and you can speak Igbo in your own language, which was the foundation for the translation of the Igbo language later on, Ajayi Krada was responsible for this. So all those who still have worship in Igbo language in your local dialect, as long as you can use primer and put words together, 
this man was linguistically the author of the foundation of your linguistic documentation after that he also presented and prepared the primer for the nukwe language the nukwe language he wrote the primer as he wrote the primer for Igbo, the abc of nukwe language when he finished doing that he also produced a full grammar and vocabulary of the nupe language tell me any other nigerian who is so detribalized detribalized to the extent that he worked among the Igbo, he worked among the niger data he now produced things also for nupe language and all that he was a truly national nigerian citizen that was a giant crowd he made a lot of languages that are fundamental and then they are still helping us today and now he was the one who founded the with james davis what they call the academy in 1860 the academy was a place where people debated and planned and strategized for the development of society like the greek areopagus in those days this was the foundation of nationalism which led to the founding of our fathers that fought for independence today the church was the platform for asking for independence of Nigeria. What he started, James Johnson continued, and his grandson, Herbert Macaulay, also continued. So he was very, very instrumental to all, all these. Now, this man was a very good man who had so much impact to the extent that Henry Venn, the then Secretary General of the Church Missionary Society in London, recommended him to be consecrated a bishop. The whites rose against him. But Henry Venn, for those of you who are scholars, was not just the Secretary General of the CMS, he was the son of one of John Venn, one of the pioneers also of the CMS. He said, we need an African pastorate, a native pastorate. He was the one who devised the three selves. We want a church that was self-governing, that was self-financing, and self-propagating. No need of white men to give us money. No need of white men to govern us. No need for white men to begin to spread the gospel for us. Self-governing, self-financing, self-propagating. And so, upon his recommendation, very, very reluctantly, there was no other person that could be qualified, more qualified than Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder. And so, he was consecrated on the 29th of June, 1864, exactly 160 years ago, as the first bishop of black or African extraction. It was Most Reverend Charles Langley, Archbishop of Canterbury, who consecrated him exactly 160 years ago. He was appointed and consecrated Bishop of Niger Territories. But Queen Victoria gave him a license. You know, the Queen was also the titular head of the church. Gave him a license that reads, Bishop of the United Church of England and Ireland in the said countries in Western Africa beyond the limits of our dominions. So, in reality, correct this history today. It was not just the Bishop of the Niger, not just a Bishop in Nigeria, it was Bishop of West Africa. In 1854 and 1857, he traveled with uh, William Becky on an expedition up the Niger. And his labor here in Igbo land was most remarkable. Five more minutes. <laughs> now, let me rush through the other highlights. He was the one who invited the Roman Catholics to come and join him in the white labor in eastern nigeria so the roman catholics will have to be grateful to the anglican church and give them land was a victim of racial discrimination his work was criticized by young ambitious white men who felt that a black man could not be bishop over them his charges charges against him were not brought to his knowledge he was not asked to defend himself he was given suspension i mean yes that was their decision and he resigned his appointment and you know he died at a stroke because his work was not appreciated he was a seed planter these are the unique achievements of crowder i will run through them and then i will end one pioneer evangelist to nigeria number two he was a man with the most remarkable human transformation of a slave to become a bishop like joseph 
former prisoner who became prime minister. Number three, he was the first black bishop in the whole world. Number four, he was the founder and father of Christianity in the East, in the Niger Delta, most of the West, and most of the North, and neighboring countries, including Ghana. Archbishop Kwashi even told me, reading through the memoirs of Ajay Crowder, he was heading up to Yola, the seat of our Archbishop of uh, Yola, Bishop of Yola. He was going there until he couldn't make it there. That was the ambition of that man. That was how important he was. Number five, he was the first student of Furabi College. Number six, he was the greatest interpreter who translated works into different languages. Number seven, he was the greatest polyglot. Ajay Krada could speak 13 languages. Ajay Krada could speak Yoruba, English, Termine, Igbo, Boni, Nupe, Arabic, Hausa, Ewe, Creole, and he also had good knowledge of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Number eight, he was the one who read the Lord's Prayer to Queen Victoria in Yoruba at Buckingham Palace. Next, he was the one who presented an Arabic Bible to the Atar of Lokoja, evangelizing the North in 1841. He built the first set of schools in Nigeria. He was a deliverance minister who confronted the gods. He was, an, a, he was a champion of religious interaction. He started the first Christian-Muslim dialogue and interaction. Ajay Krada was also a peace builder who intervened during warfare to settle communities. So peace and conflict resolution followed the model that he did. Ajay Krada was also somebody who contributed to agriculture. Here is today. Cassava, that is the source of our gari today, was brought to Nigeria by Samuel Ajayi Krauda. He was the one that taught us. He was an apostle of agriculture. Thomas Foxwell at that time said it was the Bible and the plow. So this idea of evangelizing and also involved engaging in agriculture and skills acquisition, masonry, this was something that was spearheaded by this man. Language scholars celebrate him. Geographers call celebrating because of his experiences and his documentation on the exploration of many parts of Nigeria. He was also working with the Royal Niger Company. His efforts was also the foundation of modern Nigerian commerce and economy and international trade. I will end by quoting this particular scripture. One man called Jesse Page, he wrote a book on the black bishop. That book was published in 1908. It has 499 pages. He said this. He wrote this when he heard about the death of Krada. I quote, I heard of Krada's death one Sunday morning while I was in Rome in January 1892. I was to address Signor Capellini's band of honest Christian Italian soldiers that evening. I had the topic, but I put aside the subject matter I had chosen and told them simply the story of Samuel Ajayi Krada. Never, surely, had any audience been more surprised and interested. I hope you, my audience, who have also had the impact of this man in every ramification, we also directly or indirectly appreciate the life that this man lived. And know that the Church of Nigeria has done a bit, but the government of Nigeria has not yet given any honor to this man. He ought to be awarded the GCFR, not just the GCON. As a man who really spearheaded the civilization of most part of the world, spearheaded the education of most parts of the world and laid the foundation for the modern Nigerian state. Jai Krada has not been properly appreciated. Nothing significantly has been named after him by the Nigerian country. And today, may what you have done here be the starting point of recognizing this giant of Africa, the proud of Africa, the blood of the black race. May I ask every one of you, every one of you, with due respect, when we remember people, we observe a moment of silence for them for a minute. Ajay Krada deserves two minutes of your observance. Let's bow our heads in prayer, in contemplation as we remember the greatest Nigerian to have ever come to our shores, who, though unrecognized here, is being celebrated in heaven. Long may his legacies endure. Observe in memory. In whichever area you have benefited from his life, in whichever area you have encountered him, directly or indirectly, let us now say a prayer of thanksgiving to God Almighty and thank God for this diocese for remembering him. A moment of silence after which Baba Ken Okeke will say a prayer and commit his memory to rest in peace.
name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God Almighty, many things happen once in a lifetime. Thank you for this moment that we can reflect on what you have done through a man. A man that human beings have not really recognized for who he was or his worth. But thank you that at your own time, you have made this to happen at this moment. May we who listened and understood continue to reflect and apply in our lives and continue from where this man stopped in Jesus' name. Bless this diocese. Bless all those who are here. Bless all those who carry this message to the nooks and crannies of this country and of this world. Bless the memory of Samuel Ajay Crowder. And bless, Lord, all those who made this lecture happen. May we continue to understand you more and more through the efforts of people bringing this truth to us. May we never allow the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to dim in any way. Grant us this, Lord, we pray. And strengthen your servants, the bishop and the Niger, and all those who are around to make sure that the gospel is held aloft for people to hear and draw all men to yourself. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.